Hello everyone, my name is Yi Zhang. I am a research fellow at Dana Farrow Cancer Institute working on computational biology. This video is created for the course to give an introduction of the web tool called LD Link, developed by Dr. Michelle Makila in collaboration with NCI Center for Biomedical Informatics and Information Technology. Before we dive into the web tool, let's get familiar with some concepts in population genetics. Humans have millions of natural genetic variants, or SNPs, and the occurrence of them are not independent. That is, some genetic variants naturally travel together. To measure the co-occurrence of alleles at different SNPs in a population, the concept of linkage disequilibrium is defined when alleles of a pair of SNPs couple with each other. Similarly, a pair of variants reach linkage equilibrium when their alleles occur in an independent way. The two most common metrics for measuring linkage disequilibrium or LD are D prime and R squared values. The R squared values are used more often since it corrects for the marginal allele frequency of SNPs. In other words, if the R square values between a pair of SNPs is high, for example, larger than 0.8, we say the pair of SNPs are in LD and mostly they are inherited together. Similarly, when we see a cluster of SNPs are highly linked with each other in terms of LD, we call them to be in a haplotype block. For all the concepts above, I will demonstrate examples using the LD link web tool. If you recall from the previous GWAS video that we have seen SNPs associated with cancer, which are in intergenic regions with function missing. Using this LD link web tool, we are able to easily get all SNPs linked to a certain GWAS variant. So I will next first showcase several LD link functionalities that are very useful for exploring haplotype structures among genetic variants. I will focus on a small cluster of breast cancer-related SNPs around the gene called MRPA30, where three breast cancer-related SNPs have been reported before. Then I will showcase the interactive visualization of all GVAS SNPs when you have your own set of GVAS results. This is the main page of LD Link, and there are many functionalities available. To help you understand more about LD and haplotype structure, I will first utilize the three breast cancer SNPs to dive into the functionality of LD HAP, LD pair, and LD POP. If you go to LD HAP, LD HAP is to calculate population specific haplotype frequencies of all possible haplotypes observed for a list of curated variants. So you can input a list of variant RS numbers, and a population group. Here I put the, all the three breast cancer SNPs that were discovered before. I still choose European population because all of them were discovered in the European ancestry. And if you hit click, all the possible haplotypes in the population will be returned. So here you can notice that each column is a haplotype composed of the three SNPs. The most frequent haplotype is CAC. It is interesting to notice that if there is a C allele at the first SNP, the following two SNPs must have A and C alleles. Instead, if the first SNP has the T allele, for the rest two SNPs, they can have different combination of the alleles. For the next functionality, let's look at LD pair. And LD pair is for investigating correlated alleles for an A pair of variants in high LD. So it can input any two RS numbers and a population group. Here I inputted the two breast cancer associated SNPs. Much information is in this table so that you can observe the allele frequency for both of the SNPs and their linkage. One interesting phenomenon here is that 
The G allele of this 1094 SNP is mutually exclusive with the allele C of RS4415084. Consistent with the haplotype structure, the allele C of RS4415084 is correlated with the A allele of the second SNP. In fact, the C allele of the first SNP is the protective allele. To check that, let's go back to GWAS catalog. I have searched this SNP and find that T is the risk allele and C is the protective allele. So that if T is a risk allele, the, sec the G allele of the second SNP must be the risk allele. Is that the case? We can go back to query the second SNP in GWAS catalog. And indeed, the risk allele is a G allele, which matches the observation. Our pop is to investigate allele frequencies and linkage disequilibrium patterns across 1,000 genome project populations. Here you can, you can input any two R's numbers and population of interest. Here I put the two breast cancer associated SNPs and select the European population because the SNPs were originally discovered in European ancestry. If you click Calculate, it will return the following images and a table of allele frequency with LD values. So here you can notice that among different populations, the allele frequency background are similar but different for both alleles, and thus the LD values will be different. Another very useful module in LD Link is the LD Proxy. LD Proxy is for interactively exploring proxy and putative functional variants for a query variant. Here you can input an RS number and a population group. I inputted the first breast cancer SNP and still within European population. So if you hit calculate, it may take a few minutes and return you a useful image and a useful table. In the image, it is plotting the LD linkage information and map, map all the SNPs nearby along the chromosome. This is an interactive plot so that you can click on any of this circle and get to know what RS number there is, what is the query variant, what is a proxy variant, how far it is, and what is the minor allele frequency, what is the linkage, and so on. For the curate SNP, shown as blue here, if you look at all SNPs above the R square number to be above 0.8, there are a lot of them. So any of the SNP linked to the Curie SNP can be the possible functional SNP. But is there a way to rank them? If you screw down to the table, the table is listing all slightly linked SNP with a Curie SNP and sorted by R square value by default. If we ask them to show more SNPs, and you can look at the regular DB score and haplotype links to determine which one is more functional. And we will cover it in the next video. Going back to the table, it is a pretty much informative one, including many SNPs. Here for each line is a SNP with RS number, chromosome location, the two different alleles, allele frequency, 
distance to the curious nip. Ld in d prime and r square. And the correlated alleles if they are in tight linkage. You can even search any of the SNP that is interesting. For example, this one. If you screw down, you can click download all proxy variants. This may take a few minutes. And doing this, you can get all the proxy SNPs with the query one. By default, they are ranked by R square values. The next functionality I would like to introduce is LD matrix. LD matrix is for creating an interactive heat map matrix or pairwise linkage disequilibrium statistics. You can input a list of variant RS numbers and a population group here. Now let's try selecting some SNPs from the previous proxy list. I have pasted the proxy list here. Let's try selecting some highly linked SNPs and paste them in the matrix. as well as some lowly linked ones. Using this, you can get a plot of linkage disequilibrium of pairwise LD values. Clearly, there are two clusters of SNPs Within each cluster, there is highly linkage, but across cluster, there is low one. And indeed, in genomic distance, they are also further. Let's still use this short list of SNPs to, to look at them in the SNP chip module. I copy them and paste in the snapshot module and hit calculate. Snapshot module is to find commercial genotyping platforms for variants. You can input a list of variants and check which ones will be measured by a certain arrays. There are many different types of arrays, but here basically you can notice that the curious snip will show up in many genotyping areas, as well as several other ones. The last module I want to introduce is LD associate module. LD associate is for interactively visualize association p-value results and linkage disequilibrium patterns for a genomic region of interest. Input is a tab or space limited association results file and the population group. This is very useful if you have your own GWAS results. Here let's try use the example GWAS data and use the default region view. If you hit calculate, you will first observe one image with a table. The image here is different from that image in LD proxy in terms of the y-axis. Here the y-axis is showing the significance level of association provided in your GWAS results file. For each of the SNPs, the color implies the linkage disequilibrium and the number here implies the regular db score in terms of the functionality that we will cover later. For this plot, it is showing a cluster of SNPs that are associated with prostate cancer nearby the mic locus. 